Hi kids, this is Lindsay. Today we're going to look at Grammar Friends. Now we don't usually look at Grammar Friends, but today I'm going to do that because I want to review some lessons in Grammar Friends and talk about it. All right, today look at page 74 in your Grammar Friends. All right, uh, page 74, the title is Life in the Past. So let's read what they say. If you look at the book, you'll see some people getting tickets. And let's read it. Everyone's got a ticket. Now, what does that mean? Everyone, apostrophe S, is that is, was, or has. Everyone, mm, it's has. It's not is God. It's not was God. Everyone has got a ticket. Now, in American English, you can say everyone has a ticket. Everyone has got a ticket. That's okay. Don't worry about if you say has got or has. So let's look at it. Everyone has a ticket. Everyone's got a ticket. They're the same thing. What would you like to see first? I'd like to see something. He doesn't care what it is, so he said something. I'd like to see something about life in ancient Rome. Rome was very powerful a long time ago. Today it's Italy, but Italy is a country today. Rome was really, really big, more than just Italy. So it was a civilization a thousand years ago and it was called Rome, R-O-M-E. Today it's where Italy is, but Rome also had parts of France, England, Spain, so Rome was very, very big. You know, like ancient China used to be really, really big too, even bigger than it is today. But ancient Rome, ancient, ancient China, those are countries that were important a long time ago. Ancient Rome was very important. Anyway, let's look at the sentence. I'd like to see something about life in ancient Rome. Rome, capital R. I don't mind. That means that's okay with me. I don't care. I don't mind. I could do that. I'm interested in everything to do with history. Not anything, everything, all things. So he's going to say everything. I'm interested in everything to do with history. So he doesn't care if it's Rome or China or Taiwan or Yonghe. He's interested in everything to do with history. Is there anything from ancient Egypt? See, Maddie doesn't really agree. She's more interested in ancient Egypt. Egypt is still a country. But thousands of years ago, you know, the Egyptians built the pyramids. They had a very old, well, they still have a civilization, but their civilization is very, very old. So ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, ancient China. But you know, Rome became Italy and China is still there. And Egypt is still Egypt, but it's very different than it used to be. All right, it doesn't matter. Let's look at the story. Indefinite pronouns. Now, I'm sure you have written this. I'm sure your head teacher has talked about it. But again, I want you to use a pencil and we're going to change some things. Some things are UK English and I want you to fix them. Not fix them, change them. Our school uses American English and I want to focus on your learning American English. Okay, let's read it. Indefinite pronouns. We use indefinite pronouns to talk about people, things, and places that we don't name. So we're not going to give somebody a name like John. We're going to say someone. We're not going to say McDonald's. We're going to say somewhere. So we're not going to name it. We're just going to use some or something or someone or everyone or no one. So let's read it. We use indefinite pronouns with some every and no in affirmative sentences. Affirmative means yes sentences. Affirmative sentences, negative sentences. Affirmative means yes, 
Negative means no. Affirmative means yes. So affirmative sentences. So if you answer yes, you will use that. But you probably know in English, when you answer no, negative sentences, things change. So let's look what they say. Well, let's look at the first examples. Everyone's got a ticket. That means everyone has got a ticket. No one's missing. Now this doesn't mean has. That means no one is missing. The next one, I'd like to see something about life in ancient Rome. I'd means I would. I would like to see something about life in ancient uh, Rome. Rome, 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 Rome. Now, the next sentence. We use indefinite pronouns with any. In negative sentences and questions, you know this, you're not in first grade. Is there anything from ancient Egypt? That means anything. She doesn't care. Maybe a story about the life in ancient Egypt. Maybe the story about food in ancient Egypt. Maybe about what people wore in ancient Egypt. Anything is okay. I haven't seen anything as interesting as this before. I haven't seen anything as interesting as this before. So easy sentence, nothing. All right, places, and they give you a full list. You can look at that at the bottom, at the, 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 the graph. It says affirmative sentences, negative sentences, and questions, and what we use. You can look at it. You can practice it. But let's look at the sentences. Look at number one. Number one, they already give you the answer. Has anyone been to this museum? Because we're not going to say has anything unless a dinosaur came to the museum. So has anyone been to this museum? Because people go places. Has anyone been to this museum? Look at number two. Okay, we're gonna talk about Max. And we don't know where Max is. And we're looking for Max. Now this is a little hard, but if I want to say not any place, not any place, I will say anywhere. So we couldn't see Max anywhere. We couldn't, we're looking everywhere, but everywhere we looked, we didn't see him. So no place means we didn't see Max anywhere. There's a didn't, so we didn't see Max, sorry, couldn't, sorry, we couldn't see Max anywhere. Because it's couldn't, anywhere is the right answer. Look at number three. Anyone, everyone, no one, well, let me see. Carvings. If you cut something into stone or to wood, that is called a carving. So maybe if you're in ancient Egypt and you see a wall and somebody cut their name in the wall, that is a carving. So anyone saw the carving, no one saw the carving. Is that a yes sentence or a no sentence? Well, there's no not or no or didn't or can't in this sentence. So this is an affirmative sentence. An affirmative sentence means yes sentence. So it can't be anyone. It has to be no one saw the carvings. It's important to look, is this an affirmative sentence or a negative sentence? Yes sentence or a no sentence? So for number three, no one saw the carvings. All right, number four. You look at number four. We're all here. We're all here. Well, is there a not in this sentence? Did you say no anywhere in the sentence? You didn't, so this is an affirmative sentence. We're all here. No one's missing. That means no one is missing. Be careful, no one, two words. No one, no one is missing. We're all here, no one's missing. Look at number five. Okay, I've looked everywhere for the statues. I've looked somewhere for the statues. Well, this is a little difficult. If you're looking in all the places, everywhere, 
all the places, every single place, then you need to use every. So I've looked everywhere for the statues. Now, you're right. It's not impossible to say, I've looked somewhere. For example, I found something. I've seen someone. It's not impossible. But if you're looking and you can't find it, then you have looked everywhere. I've looked everywhere for the statues. I can't find it. I can't find them. I've looked everywhere for the statues. I can't find them. Okay? So that means you didn't find it. Them. I keep saying it. Next one, number six. Was there? Well, this is a question. Is it a negative or an affirmative? Let's see. Was there? Anyone? Was there? Well, you know, it doesn't matter because it's a question. So what are we going to use? Was there anyone at the park? You see, it's a question, right? So was there anyone at the park? That's why the answer is anyone. All right. Quickly look over page 75. Oh, so beautiful. Probably looks like Teacher Daniel's house, Teacher Maggie's house. I can see Teacher Michelle, Teacher Sandra, ooh, walking around. Ooh, look at my, okay. Don't tell them I said that. All right. We're going to write the letters for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You probably already done it. You're probably right. Let's read it. There are flowers everywhere. That means all the places have flowers. There are flowers everywhere. There aren't any pictures. Negative sentence. There aren't any pictures mm, anywhere. There aren't any pictures anywhere. No pictures. Look at number three. Everyone's, well, let's see. Or is everyone smiling? I think so. The person behind the door, I don't know. Is that person smiling? I really can't see, but I would probably say everyone's happy, okay? Everyone's happy. There's nowhere, well, let's see, what are we going to do? There's nowhere to run, no, we don't have that answer. There's nowhere, oh, I know, there are no chairs. So there's nowhere to sit. There's nowhere to sit, there are no chairs. There are no seats. There's nowhere to sit. Look at the next one. There's someone. Ah! We don't know who it is. We don't know their name. But we know someone. Now, where are they? Behind the door, right? That strange person, smiling, not smiling. I don't know. Looks like Jason. I think it's Jason. There's someone behind the door. There's someone behind the door. But... Number six, no one's, I'm going to say unhappy. I think they all look unhappy. Oh, they all look happy. So no one's unhappy. That means no one is unhappy. Sounds good. Number, number seven, there's nothing. There's nothing. Hmm, let me see. Hmm, there's nothing. Where are we? Okay. This one's a little strange. Because in the other class, somebody said, but I see plants. Actually, those plants are not under the table. They're next to the table. So the answer is, there's nothing under the table. And number eight is, there's something on the table. There's something on the table. There's nothing under the table. So I imagine your answers were probably all right. Okay? I think so. Number three, part three, part three, we're looking at page 75, okay? Page, page 75, part three. What's behind the door? Nothing, period. That's a one-word sentence. What's behind the door? Nothing. That means no thing, not person, nothing. If I said, who's behind the door, what's the answer? No one. Who's behind the door? No one. What's behind the door? Nothing. The room is empty. Empty. Number two, who's in that room? Now we're talking about a person. Who's 
in that room, that room. Well, not this room, but that room. Who's in that room? No one, two words, no one, because everybody's here. Who's in that room? No one, why? Because everybody's here. Look at number three, where's Eric going? Where's Eric going? Eric's not going anywhere. So when I say, where's Eric going? You have to write nowhere. He's not going anywhere, but you have to write nowhere. Where's Eric going? Nowhere, nowhere. Where's Eric going? Nowhere. He's staying here. Got it right, easy, right? Who's got the tickets? Now, if we have to buy the tickets, who's got the tickets? I want you to remember something. Who's got the tickets? That's another way to say who has the tickets. So who has got the tickets? Who has the tickets? Well, I'll tell you, we have to buy them. So no one. Who's got the tickets? No one. We have to buy them because no one has the tickets. We have to buy them. If someone had the tickets, we wouldn't need to buy them, but no one has the tickets, so we need to buy them. Who's got the tickets? No one. We have to buy them. Look at number five. Where are you going this evening? Where are you going this evening? I'm going to stay at home. So where, where are you going? Nowhere. Where are you going this evening? Nowhere. I'm going to stay at home because COVID-19. I don't want to get sick. Where are you going this evening? Nowhere. I'm going to stay home because my father locked the door. All right. Number six. What have you got for lunch? I want you to look at this sentence. What have you got for lunch? We don't often use got in my class. I would say, what do you have for lunch? What have you got for lunch means, what do you have for lunch? And I'm going to buy some sandwiches. That means, what have you got for lunch? Nothing, nothing, no thing. But we put them together and write nothing. He has nothing for lunch. What have you got for lunch? Nothing. I'm going to buy some sandwiches. So right now, what have you got for lunch? Nothing. So what are you going to do? I'm going to buy some sandwiches. All right. Everybody knows it, right? All right. Do we have time to look at the next page? 76. Let me look at the time. We have a little time. No problem. Look at page 76. At the top, number four, there isn't anything to do here. Isn't? We'll use any. There isn't anything to do here. But no has been to the museum yet. Well, who goes? Things or people? People go. So the answer is no one has been to the new museum yet. No one. Two words. No one has been to the new museum yet. Number three. See if you wrote it right. Museums are some, well, let's see. Are they things? Are they people? Are they places? Well, they're places. So museums are somewhere, one word. Museums are somewhere for people to go in the holidays. I want you to fix something. Do you see it says in the holidays? I don't like that. I want you to change it to on vacation. So kill in the holidays and write on vacation. V-A-C-A-T-I-O-N. So the sentence will say, museums are somewhere for people to go on vacation. Why? Why do I want to change this? In American English, holiday means Christmas or Halloween. In the UK, holiday means vacation. So 
because you're learning American English in our school, you want to say vacation, not holidays. They're not talking about Christmas. They're not even talking about weekends. In American English, holidays are not the weekends. You have to say weekends. If you wanted to say museums are somewhere for people to go on weekends, that's okay, on weekends, weekend one word with an S, on weekends, that would be okay. Or on vacations, that would be good too. That would be good too. But in American English, we don't say in the holidays. So I want you to draw a line and change it to on vacation. Okay? Number four, is there any to see in that room? Well, you could argue anyone, but actually they're talking about a thing to see. If they want to say, if, is there something interesting? Is there a cool picture or a cool painting in that room? They're talking about a thing. So the question is, is there anything to see in that room? Anything? Now you could argue, is there anyone to see in that room? You could say it, but they're talking about a thing to see in a museum. Is there anything to see in that room? So, look at number five. I'm thirsty. Me too. Wait a minute. I'm thirsty. Let's get some Coca-Cola to drink. No, don't write Coca-Cola. Coffee. No, don't write Coca-Cola. The point is, when somebody says, let's get some, they don't care what it is. Anything. So the answer is, let's get something to drink in the cafe. This sentence, the word cafe, C-A-F-E, do you see that little line above the E? That's not English. So that word is French, and it means coffee shop. You don't need to change it. In American English, we say cafe. Cafe, coffee shop, same thing. You can say in that coffee shop, in that cafe. In this sentence, they wrote cafe, no problem. Is there, but, 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 but no, wrong one. I'm thirsty, let's get something to drink in the cafe. We don't care what it is, something, anything, but let's get something to drink in that cafe. Let's look at the next one. You can't buy a souvenir. You can't buy a souvenir. You know when you go to another country and you want to remember your vacation, you buy something to remember it, so that's called a souvenir. Maybe you go to Japan and you buy a toy and you remember Japan because you have this toy, so that is a souvenir. Let's buy, well, you can't buy a souvenir, why? Working, person, people work. So no one is working in the museum shop today. No one is working in the museum shop today, so you can't buy anything. No one, two words, is working in the museum shop today. I would be angry. I love museum shops. Number eight, number, 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 number seven. We're carrying our coats because we couldn't find, well, you want to put your coats in a place. You put your coats in a place. Place is where. So we're carrying our coats because we couldn't find anywhere to leave them, to put them. We couldn't find anywhere to leave them. Anywhere is a place. We couldn't find anywhere to leave them. Look at number eight. I really like the museum. I really like the museum. Every, okay, this is a little hard. You look. So that means every place you look, there are interesting things to see. So the answer is, everywhere you look, you there are interesting things to see. Everywhere, okay? So you have the answers, right? Think about it. Go back and practice those. Um, page 74, 75, 76. 
It's best if you say those many, many times. I don't have anything. What do you, what do you want for, for lunch? Anything is okay with me. Where are you going? Nowhere. What did you eat? Nothing. If you practice those, they will become very easy for you. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you, kids. Bye-bye. Stay safe.